What's up guys, my name is Brandon and after many months of beta testing and delays, Apple has finally released the latest version of macOS, macOS Monterey. So in this video, we're going to be covering everything new with macOS Monterey and we're also going to talk about whether or not you should update from macOS Big Sur. So let's start off with the compatible Macs. So Monterey is compatible with the 2015 and later MacBook, early 2015 and later MacBook Air, early 2015 and later MacBook Pro, the late 2014 and later Mac Mini, late 2015 and later iMac, 2017 and later iMac Pro, and the late 2013 and later Mac Pro. And as far as the size of this update, it is going to be a pretty large size, expect at least five gigabytes. And for the build number, you can see right here, it's 21A559. And then you'll also notice right here, we have a new wallpaper. So we do get new wallpapers and new screensavers with macOS Monterey. So if we go into our system preferences into desktop and screensaver, you will see that we have the dynamic desktop right here, and it could change it from dark to light or of course you can change it to dynamic based on the time of day so those are new then we also have the iMac based wallpapers right here and all of these different colors I have the purple iMac so I like rocking this wallpaper from time to time but I do like the standard Mac OS Monterey wallpaper right there and as far as the screensavers go we do have the Mac OS Monterey screensaver right here and then also the hello screensaver as well that we saw on the iPhone startup screen as well. Now, while we're inside of the system preferences here, we do also have another new feature that is long overdue for Mac OS, and that is erase all content and settings. So once you open system preferences, if you go up top and just click on system preferences, you will see erase all content and settings. And this is going to allow you to erase everything. If you wanted to sell your Mac and wanted to wipe everything really quickly, you can do that instead of having to manually remove your data and fully you know, reinstall the software it was always such a massive pain to you know sell a Mac because of the way you had to erase all of your data and reinstall the software so this will make things a lot easier in the future when you go to sell or trade in an iMac or a MacBook and speaking of the MacBook the MacBook also gains another feature that's been on iOS for a while and that is low power mode so this is going to be very handy if you have a MacBook and want to save some battery life now we also get airplay to Mac with Mac OS Monterey so you will be able to airplay you know videos or pictures whatever you want to from your iPhone or your iPad straight to your Mac and you can even use your Mac as an airplay to speaker so if you wanted to play music off of your iMac your MacBooks speakers you can do that via airplay now now we also have some changes inside of the Safari application and most of these are going to be just like what we saw in iOS and iPad OS but we are going to have some changes here for Safari so the main thing is it going to be the tab view so if you go to your Safari preferences right here and under the tab section you will see that we have two different options so we have compact where you can see the tabs are off to the right of the address bar or separate where the tabs are below the address bar and then you also get the option to automatically collapse tab titles into icons if you want to so you know i like the look of separate but compact will save a lot of space right there and you'll have more real estate to see whatever website you're on and then of course we do also have the tab group view right here so if you wanted to add tab groups you can do that right here and then also the shared with you section will show you all of the received links that you received via iMessage so if somebody sent you a message it will show all of the links that were sent to you right in one section right here and just like on iOS if you click on this part right here where it says from and your contact if you click on that it will take you to the exact section of the text message conversation where they sent that link which is pretty neat but overall you're just going to see a lot of similar changes to what we saw on ios and ipad os inside of safari and really it's the same deal with everything on mac os monterey it's a lot of very similar features that we see on ios and ipad os like for example if we go up here to the control center you will see that we have the little indicator right here to show that we are using our microphone on the system so that orange indicates that of course the green will show up next to your webcam but we now have that indication right there we also have focus modes now on mac os just like on ios and you can see this is the one i'm in right here so these are all of our focus modes and you have your focus preferences right here if you click on that it will take you to the focus section where you can customize this to your liking and then also we are this is under notifications and focus so if we go to our system preferences you will see it's right here so this is just this section right here but if we go back to notifications you can see we now have the alert styles you could change 
what the alert style looks like and the style of the notifications looks different on Mac OS Monterey as well. So it kind of mirrors what we see on the iPhone and the iPad. And if you use widgets on your Mac, you can go to edit widgets right here and you'll see a new find my widget in the section right here that you could add to your widget view. And another pretty cool feature in Mac OS Monterey is that you can actually view the battery percentage of a third party Bluetooth audio device. So if it's connected and you see it up here, you could actually see the battery level of a third party device. So you can see how I have the battery percentage for my magic keyboard and my trackpad. So if I connected like a third party device that's not Apple, it will actually show me the battery percentage of it. We also get all of the changes inside of the messages application that we got on iOS 15. So Mac OS Monterey, you now have this view right here. We could see this carousel view where you could see multiple images without taking up a lot of real estate. You have the grid view right here as well. So you can see all of the images very easily. We of course have the FaceTime features like share play, spatial audio, the portrait video. So now your video will look a lot better on FaceTime if you add that bokeh in the background. All of the FaceTime features that we got on iOS are now on macOS Monterey as well. And same with the shared with you feature that I showed you earlier, we can see all of the shared with you links that were sent via iMessage and all of the different applications. We also have live text and visual lookup. So if we go to, let's just go on to one of these images right here. So I can show you guys what that looks like. So just for an example, you can see I have a picture of my cat right here. And if we tap on the little eye right up top and the top right, right here, you can see we have this little paw that comes over the cat. If you click on that, it will show you some results. So it'll show you what type of cat or plant or whatever it may be. So you can see it will search and that's going to show you it is a tabby cat, which is correct. So again, it works on plants, dogs, cats, things like that. And also when you click that eye, you can see all the details about the phone that took that picture, you know, which lens took it, the quality, the resolution, all of that, which is pretty neat. Now we also get the quick notes feature. So if we hover over in the bottom right hand corner of our screen, which you can change that by the way, via hot corners, or if you wanted to do a keyboard shortcut, you can change that to pull up quick notes quicker and easier. But if you hover over in the bottom right hand corner of the screen, you will see quick notes right there. If you click on that, it will create a new quick notes. Like for example, if you go into Safari and say you wanted to copy something from an article or a link, if we just go ahead and select some of this text right here and then right click, you can see you could add it to that quick note very easily. And not only will it just, you know, copy over the text, but you can see it did it in this really cool way right here where it's quoted and you have the link as well. And you could also click this button right here as well, this little link button right here. If you did not add a link from the web page, if you wanted to manually add that link, if you just wanted to maybe copy text over, you could do that and then click on this button right here to add the link to the current web page you're on, which is very handy. And once you create a quick note, they will show up inside of your notes application up top right here. So they have their own separate section for quick notes. And you can see you have all the options in here. Also inside of notes, we do have tags. So if you wanted to add tags to notes, you can do that as well, just like you can on iOS and on iPad OS. You could also see uh, the last edited in shared notes. If you have a shared note with somebody, so let me go ahead and find one of my shared notes. So here is a shared note and you can see up top, we have the little person icon right there. If you click on that, and if you go to show all activity, you can see the last time the note was edited and by who. And then also if you're sharing this note with a lot of people, you can also mention people in this as well. So if I wanted to mention somebody, you just put the at sign and you can mention people that are inside that note and they will get a notification when they're mentioned. And it's the same deal with the reminders application as well. So you can see we have our tags right here and I didn't really show you guys tags too much. Let me go ahead here and show you how the tags works. If you put the hashtag right there, you can see it kind of just auto completes it for you. If you have a note that you already put a hashtag in, you could do that right there. Or of course you can add a new one. You just do it right there and you can see it pops up right here in real time. So pretty cool, a nice way to kind of organize your notes together aside from folders. But anyways, we have that same feature for the tags inside of the reminders application as well. Now, one thing I'm really excited about that has just come to Mac OS is the shortcuts application. So now we have shortcuts on Mac OS, which is awesome. This was limited to just iOS and iPad OS previously, but now we can create new shortcuts from our desktop or our laptop, which is very handy, especially if you do screen scripting, if you wanted to, you know, type things out, it's just a lot easier to see right here. You can just kind of, you know, drag these over and it makes creating shortcuts so much easier. Also inside,
inside of the Maps application, you can see we have the updated maps right here like we have in iOS and iPadOS 15, where they're much more detailed. We have the updated guides and all of the features that we see on iOS. But if you swipe or if you scroll all the way out, you can see we do have this cool grid view right here. So this is limited to just the M1 and the M1 Pro and M1 Max chip. So just keep that in mind. But this is a really cool feature. Doesn't really serve a big purpose other than just looking cool and being able to see all of the country in this globe view but pretty neat little feature here in maps as well also something we see on ios also inside of the system preferences we do now have a dedicated password section so instead of being inside of the safari preferences it's now inside of our system preferences and if we click on this and put it in our passcode and then if we go into here and click on one of our passwords you will see all the information about it right here and if you click on edit you will see that we have verification code so just like on ios we now have practically two-factor authentication built in to Mac OS now. So if you click on that, you can set up your verification code right here, which is very handy. And then if we go back to our system preferences and go to our Apple ID up top right here, and then go to iCloud, you will see that we have the private relay feature here on Mac OS as well. So we have the private relay, which is currently in beta. I would probably recommend turning that off just because it can slow down your connection, but it is pretty cool that you can have that turned on here on Mac OS and kind of hide your IP address. And we also have hide my email here as well. So you can hide your email if you want to basically just give, you know, if you want to sign up for a specific like coupon code or something like that, and you didn't want to give them your real email, you could do that very easily by using this hide my email feature, which works very well. It's definitely one of my favorite features on iOS and iPadOS 15. And speaking of privacy, if you go into your mail application and go to the preferences for mail and then go over to privacy, you can see that we do have the mail privacy protection here on Mac OS as well. So this will, you know, hide your IP address and it will also load remote content privately in the background, even when you don't open the message. And then I know a lot of people were wondering about universal control, especially since Apple talked so much about this and dedicated a big portion of their event to showing this feature, but it's not available in the initial build of Mac OS Monterey. So we're gonna have to wait until later this year to take advantage of universal control. So now should you update to Mac OS Monterey? And I say, yes, absolutely. I mean, I've been using this for a while and Apple has been going through a lot of beta stages and it was very buggy in the beginning, but now with the final release it's not near as buggy as it was and it's about on par with the latest build of Mac OS Big Sur in my experience so I would definitely recommend going ahead and updating you are going to get a lot of the new features that you're kind of already used to at this point that you see on iOS and iPad OS so I would definitely recommend updating you get a lot of new features you get the security updates there's a lot of security bug fixes as well and just a better overall experience with performance in my experience as well as far as battery life goes a lot of people say battery life is about the same as Mac OS Big Sur, so would not expect any kind of change there on the MacBooks. But anyways, guys, there you have it. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, I would appreciate it if you gave it a thumbs up. Also, let me know down in a comment below what your favorite feature of Mac OS Monterey is. But anyways, guys, thanks again for watching, and I'll see you soon.